All right, so Marcus, how do you know that what Jesus is speaking of here in Luke 17 is not the great tribulation? Well, let's go to scripture, okay? Instead of just listening to our teacher on social media, that includes Find Truth 88, by the way. Instead of just listening to Find Truth 88, go to scripture, open up the word of God for yourself. Now this is Luke 17, let's scroll down to verse 26. This is Jesus' words here, by the way. I don't care how charismatic your favorite teacher is on YouTube. I don't care how many thousands, thousands of people follow the channel that you watch and how much that you agree with your teacher. All of these things do not matter in the face of God. To be quite frank with you, the larger the crowd, the more chance that there is deception in that crowd. Everywhere in scripture where you see the large crowd, where you see the many is where you see deception. Okay, this is fact. So just because that you're around a, a large group of people, just because you gather weekly doesn't mean that you're in truth. Okay, don't deceive yourself in believing that. Verse 26 of Luke 17, reading this out of the King James Version. Jesus speaking here. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, there are people who will tell you that this is the second coming that Jesus is referring to here. Now, I'm going to share scriptures with you and show you exactly where this is not the second coming that Jesus is referring to here. This is not the great tribulation that Jesus is referring to here. This is a different time frame, a different event. Verse 27. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the very day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, Jesus says, when he returns, it's going to be the same way. It's going to be the same environment as when judgment struck in the days of Noah. And this is what they were doing. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the very day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, some will tell you that this is Jesus is referring to the second coming here. Well, the problem is that when Jesus returns on the second coming, this will not be the environment that he's coming into. He's actually going to come and put an end to the battle of Armageddon. When Jesus returns on the second coming, it's now not only seven years of tribulation, but three and a half years of that seven year tribulation is a time frame called the Great Tribulation. This is the environment of the earth when Jesus comes at the second coming. Okay, not, not, it's not peace and safety, not sudden destruction. No, they're already going through destruction. They're already going through judgment at the second coming when Jesus returns. So here, Jesus is speaking of a different event. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, Jesus wasn't done here. Verse 28, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained the same day, the same day that Sodom that, that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So you're telling me, to those who say that the post-trib is what Jesus is referring to here, you're telling me that in the Great Tribulation, that mankind is going to be doing all, all this stuff here that's highlighted right here. They're going to be marrying wives. They're going to be, be uh, uh, planting and buying and selling, building. 
in the great tribulation. Well, let's just, let's just tell you what, let's just turn over there. Okay. How about we turn over to revelation chapter nine in the great tribulation here to get an idea of what scripture says is actually going to be taking place. And let's compare it to what Jesus said in Luke 17. And the, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of smoke of the pit. Verse 3 of Revelation chapter 9, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was giving power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they, sh they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither anything green, neither trees, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And they shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. Now this sounds completely different than what Jesus is explaining here. Verse 27, they ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the very day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now this is sudden destruction that Jesus is describing here. That's the way it happened in the days of Noah. That's the way it happened in the days of Lot. It was sudden judgment, sudden destruction. Verse 28, let's continue on. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. So this is not the this is not the great tribulation being described here. This is not the second coming where Jesus puts an end to the great tribulation puts an end to the uh, battle of Armageddon. Okay, no, here is a description of the great tribulation. Verse seven and the shapes of the locusts and see men were men seeking death but can't find it, desiring to die but death was fleeing from them. This is com complete uh, uh, contrast to what is being shared in Luke 17. And this is why it's so important as people of God that we pick the scriptures up for ourselves. Because all it takes is one teacher falsely teaching to lead a mass of people into deception and error. And we see this taking place all across YouTube. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their foreheads were as if it's crowns like gold. And their faces were like the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Again, that doesn't sound like uh, people building and giving and marriage. Hey, when do you want to get married, honey? Uh, let's, let's, let's get married in the Great Tribulation. No, no. Uh uh. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were the sounds of chariots and of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Now, believe me when I'm saying that they they're not building and giving in marriage and and planting and and you know no they're they're not doing all this stuff in the great tribulation. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek the tongue had his name as Apollon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more after. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which was before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. 
And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to slay one third part of men. In other words, one third part of the population of earth being destroyed. Let's go back here real quick to Luke 17. For those of you who are saying that Jesus is referring to the great tribulation here, Jesus is referring to his second coming. No, the complete contrast, the complete opposite, actually. Here in Luke 17, Jesus is describing a time where it is business as usual that people are living their own lives and not worrying about judgment, not worrying about destruction. They're living life business as usual. And then Jesus returns in the, in the rapture and catches them off guard. These are two different events being described here. I want to take you to First Thessalonians, and I'll begin to end uh, today's message here, and I'll share on this topic a couple of more times here, and, and we'll be sharing in the next live stream as well on this. I'm going to take you to First Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to scroll down to verse 16 here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh my. So the dead in Christ, those who have gone and passed before, they're rising first. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. With who? Well, with, the, with those who have just been resurrected, with the dead who have just been resurrected, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And here's a key verse here. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we see here, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, that there are a group of people who will never taste death. As plain as day as we can see it here in scripture, I understand you want to go run after your teacher and that your teacher makes you feel validated. I feel like I'm part of something. Oh, my teacher's funny. He makes me feel good. And we, we have this all through. This is, this is the Achilles heel of social media. The Achilles heel of mankind is we want to follow everyone, everybody and everyone except for Jesus. But you know, Jesus didn't say follow other Christians. Jesus didn't say follow Find Truth 88. Jesus said to follow him. Today is the day to stop running after man. Stop putting man first. Stop gi giving man and women butt slaps that they don't deserve. Because only one deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty. Amen. I encourage you, get in the scriptures for yourself and stop being deceived by the crowd. Stop being deceived by charismatic preachers who don't have the backbone to preach the truth of the living word of God. 